Leslie Garrett, Britain's most popular soprano, left her working class roots in Yorkshire 30 years ago to train at the Royal Academy of Music in London. She stayed in the South and today lives with her husband Peter and children Jeremy and Chloe in North London. Okay, listen, I've got to go and pack, because I'm going away on a trip, you know. Oh, yeah. So I'm going to lead you to it, all right? Okay, thank you, Dickie. Okay, I'll see you later. Just going in here to uh, finish my packing. This is the nerve centre of my operation, as you can see. <laughs> Complete mess. <laughs> this is where all my clothes are. Um, this is where all my paperwork is, all the administrative side of my work. And this is me getting ready to go. My childhood was dominated by my parents continually overcoming adversity, which was enormously inspiring to me, enormously inspiring. And my grandparents similarly, actually, because um, I came down to the Royal Academy of Music and I did feel like a fish out of water. There weren't many people from, you know, working class Yorkshire at the Royal Academy of Music when I went. There are now, but there weren't when I went. And um, I was having a really bad time. I'd lost, I lost my voice and I'd written to tell my mum she was crying because she couldn't help me couldn't think of a way to help me and she just she just bent down and scooped up a handful of grit from our garden and put it in an envelope with a little note that said I think you need some Yorkshire grit so I'm sending you some much as I loved Yorkshire I have to admit I couldn't wait to get away that was always a, a conundrum to me it still is in a way there is a sense to which I don't belong and I want to find out what my ancestors did and how they lived. And I passionately want my children to know about them. You have to go. Yeah, yeah, yeah but I'll be back soon, you know, I will. Okay. Okay? Okay. Go back Thursday. Right. You'll be good, okay? Okay. Love you. Love you Bye. too. Bye. Bye, love. Bye. Bye. Leslie was the first in her family to leave Yorkshire. She's decided to head back to her childhood home to try to work out why she wanted to get away in the first place. We never had any money, um, but then nobody did, so, you know, you, we were all in the same boat, more or less. We had an outside toilet when I was about five or six. I remember birds used to get into this toilet and we used to find them drowned in the morning. It was a bit gruesome. And I can just remember sort of being in this toilet and singing and it just making me feel better. I just felt calmer, actually, when I sang. Leslie grew up in Thorn, near Doncaster in South Yorkshire, where her family still live. I don't come here that often anymore, really. I used to work there in the market, so I got hypothermia when I was 14. Chip shop should be on the left. Oh, it's a mini market now. This used to be a chip shop. I used to queue here with my nanny for fish and chips. Oh, no, there's the chippy. No, it's still a chip shop. Oh, God, this is so familiar to me. <laughs> this is so painfully familiar. Leslie's on the way to her father Derek's house. Derek's always lived in or around Thorn. He started his working life as a signalman but later qualified as a teacher, rising to headmaster. The biggest memory, funnily enough, when I was very tiny that I have of him, is of his smell. He just sort of smelled of industry somehow. He had this wonderful, wonderful smell of sort of coal and steam and oil about him. A working man's smell. <laughs> this is a microphone, Father. This is a microphone. Hello. Hold the microphone. Yeah. Looks like some sort of airy badger. <laughs> <laughs> All right, love. Oh, this is looking brilliant. Yes. Fabulous. It's yeah. finished, Dad. This is unusual. No. It, well, no, it's not quite finished. No, there's, uh, it down there's quite a lot to do uh, yet. I can remember 
um, when you went to college, because you were the first member of our family, not only to own your own house and to completely do it up from scratch, but you were the first member of our family to go into further education. You were always in those days encouraged to better yourself. Yeah. Your yeah. parents, your grandparents, you must better yourself, you know. Yeah. But I can also remember expressions like, don't get above yourself. Oh, yeah. Oh, you know, yeah. Don't and who do you think you are? Yeah, yeah. And, you know, so, which, to me, were yeah. a, a complete contradiction. Yeah, yeah. Because I was desperate to get above yeah. myself, frankly. I yeah. was, you know, as you were. A signalman was a, an ace job for me. Yeah. Because there's a lot of space between trains coming and trains going. Yeah. And t being ready for trains. Yeah. Where you're doing nothing. Yeah. And you read. I got a nickname on the railway called Boots. Because every time the train passed the window, the caller could see where my boots are <laughs> <up. laughs> Your feet up. Re yeah. Reading, yeah. you know. Yeah. Well, what you show me then? Look, it, you seem to be delving into the past. You seem to be going very historical on me. <laughs> so, come and have a look in here. Here lies a little bit of a mystery. That oh. is your great, great granddad's gold watch. Great, great granddad Garrett? Yes. There he is. Look. Oh, sir, I've never seen this. That's him there. That's Charlie. Can they get a better picture? Oh, there. Charlie Garrett, Charlie. yeah. You see that watch, Jane? You've got oh, it is in, that this? You've got it in oh, your hand. Look at that. What, yeah. what date is this, then? That's 1901, and he was a Thorn Parish councillor. Wow. Now, he is yeah, look, a bit there. of a mystery. And oh. he's my great granddad's dad, so my great great granddad. Yeah. And this is 1901. Yep. That's there is a strange story. Yeah. That his wife died through being given some noxious substance when she called for her medicine. This is an absolute mystery. Now, I believe it was like me. Yeah. That at nine o'clock at night his right elbow starts to lift. You know, <laughs> Uncontrollably <laughs> towards It the moon. would be nice to find out. Well he uh, looks like yeah. you, doesn't he? <laughs> he looks like you a little. What? You mean big and fat? No. Yeah. Well, just got broad face. There's the watch. Yeah. Right, I'll take the watch and the photos yeah. and I'm gonna try and find out a bit more about all these people. Okay. Right, love. My love. Try enough. Don't find out too much. <laughs> <laughs>